Hello and welcome everyone to the Innovation Fund for Assisted Tech webcast. Um, we will be running through the objectives and scope of the Innovation Fund. We'll be talking about what funding and other support is available. And we'll also have a look at those five barriers to digital inclusion for persons with disability. We'll also have a look briefly at eligibility criteria for all applicants, then go on to the application process, key dates, and also other resources. We won't be covering a demo today on how to apply to the, to the actual application portal, but this will be uploaded online. So please check back on our website later and you'll be able to see that directly. We will set aside time to respond to questions and answers. Please do type your questions into the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. We'll do our absolute best to get to as many questions as possible. However, we probably won't be able to answer every single question. Please do avoid also putting any information that is a personal, private or about your specific organisation, as this fund is a competitive application process. So the GSMA Innovation Fund for Assistive Tech is looking to fund around eight to 12 projects, which will be selected by an independent fund panel at the start of next year. We're looking to fund startups, social enterprises, and small and medium enterprises as well. NGOs, academic institutions, UN agencies, and MNOs are not eligible on this occasion, but we strongly encourage them to apply as part of a partnership with a startup or social enterprise or SME. Projects must be using mobile or digital technology as an assistive technology and must be focused on persons with disability as a primary audience. We're giving grants on a project basis, so that means it has to have a start, a middle and an end. And we are, of course, looking for innovative solutions as well. Our focus is Africa and Asia, more on that in a moment. And we're also looking to test commercial business models wherever possible. So what this means is we're looking to find solutions that will be sustainable after the life of this grant. This could be B2B, this could be B2G, it could be B2C as well. Um, but we are looking to try and understand how market approaches can work. Um, in There are no specific sectoral focuses, so it doesn't matter if you're looking at finance, uh, disaster response, healthcare. However, we do expect all applicants to identify how they will address one or more of the five barriers to digital inclusion faced by persons with disabilities. So as you can see, these five barriers, access, affordability, relevance, knowledge and skills, safety and security, are the five barriers that the programme has identified as pivotal for persons with disability to get access to mobile technology as an assistive tech. You do not need to meet all of these barriers in the application. You can just address one. But do feel free to explain why you might address more than one. So what does the fund offer? So we're offering grants of between 100,000 and 250,000 British pounds. This money has to be used for a specific project, for example, scaling an existing product or service, or perhaps replicating into a new market. Funding will be given out on a milestone basis. So over the life of your grant, you'll co-create around four to five, maybe even six milestones, and that money will be distributed on the completion of each of those milestones. Projects can between, be between 15 and 18 months. You decide on what makes most sense for your innovation project. GSMA is bringing a series of expert um, advisors to the table in order to support our grantee or organisations. We're doing a huge amount of research. We have a dedicated research and insights team who are looking into various different ways that digital assistive tech can support persons with disability. We also run um, a boot camp, a kind of training, a training course uh, for all our grantees um, who are successful. This is a fantastic opportunity for people to exchange and learn from other applicants. And GSMA has actually been um, funding various grantees for the last eight or nine years. Uh, so we have a huge um, pool of resources and networks um, to introduce you to. 
We also offer profiling at key events and across all of GSMA's platforms, whether this is um, social media, GSMA Thrive, Mobile World Congress, M360 Africa, and so on. And finally, we're really proud to tell you that we have launched a new monitoring and evaluation support program, which means that we can help you understand if you've really had the impact that you said you were going to have throughout the life of this grant. So in terms of geography and focus, as we mentioned before, we're looking to fund startups, small and medium enterprises or social enterprises that are implementing in low and middle income countries. This can be in Africa and South Asia, but we will also consider high quality proposals from across Asia. Your project needs to test a new innovation that increases the digital inclusion of persons with disabilities or you need to be trying to scale or replicate into similar markets. We are looking to try and understand what types of business models can be sustainable and can be and can go the distance and and ensure that um, investment is crowded in after the life of the project as well. Applicants will need to address one of these five barriers, as we've discussed previously. More information can be found on our website, and we will provide some examples of each of these barriers as well um, through our website. So something important to know about this grant funding is that we, you do have to bring match funding to the table. So this is in order to demonstrate that there is a, a trust from the wider investor community and that there's skin in the game from the applicant as well. We've staggered this to acknowledge that this is this sector and um, market is quite early stage and that not all organisations might be ready to absorb this amount of money. So if you're applying for between 100,000 and 150,000 British pounds, you only need to bring 25% um, of match funding. So for example, if you decide that you want to run a reasonably, reasonably sized project and you, you think you need 100,000 British pounds in order to do that, you'll need to bring to the table 25,000 British pounds from other sources. This can be in cash or in kind. Please go to the terms and conditions for more information on that. However, if you're perhaps at a later stage in your, in your project development or your program development and you decide that you need more money in order to scale your product or service, you'll need to bring 50% of whatever you've requested from the grant. So if you request 200,000 British pounds from the fund, you'll need to bring to the table 50,000 from other sources. Very important to remember that both the grant amount and the match funding that you bring to the table will need to be spent across the whole of the project lifetime, whether that's 15 or 18 months, you decide, but you do need to spend all of that money throughout that time. In terms, of, in terms of eligibility criteria, organizations need to have active users and revenue in at least one eligible or low income market. So what that means is we're not looking for organizations that are really starting out at the very, very beginning of their journey. We are hoping to attract um, the post pilot uh, type of organization. Social enterprises registered as not-for-profit legal entities that can demonstrate that the majority of their income is derived from commercial activities will be considered eligible. Again, this is to ensure that after the life of the project, we can demonstrate that it will be sustainable and that you will go on to have more impact and serve more users. And Tech hubs, incubators, accelerators are not eligible on this occasion, unfortunately and NGOs are also not eligible to apply. Applicants cannot apply as part of a consortium, but they can apply in partnership with a startup, small or medium enterprise or social enterprise. As you might expect with these types of funds, you do need to be compliant with all relevant business licensing, tax, employee and other regulations. You need to already have a bank account in a country where you receive the grant money. This does not need to be the same location as where you're going to be implementing that project. We do recommend it, but it does not need to be the same location. What we can't do is 
offer you a grant if you do not have a bank account set up yet in the place that you want to receive that money. You need to be compliant with fundamental human rights laws, modern slavery acts, gender equality, child protection policies, and you also need to comply with safeguarding policies and also any relevant disability laws in all implementing markets. We strongly recommend that you go and look into those whenever you can and before applying. You also need to demonstrate that you meet GDPR regulations on data and privacy as well. More information can be found on our website. Moving on from eligibility, what else are we looking for? We're particularly excited to find applicants who can proactively demonstrate that their solutions reaches persons with disability as a priority. This is really, really important. We're not looking to fund solutions that might reach persons with disability. You need to demonstrate to us how you have listened to the varied needs of persons with disability in the first instance. We're also looking to find entrepreneurs with disabilities and local entrepreneurs who perhaps have first-hand experience of the problem that they're trying to solve. Of course, we also are really excited to fund uh, projects and organisations that have a great representation of women at all levels of the project and organisation. So what about the process? It's a fairly long process and it can take a little bit of um, consideration and thought to get through to the panel stage. Um, we do get quite good feedback on this process and a lot of applicants tell us that while it is a lengthy progress, process, that they get good feedback through due diligence and the opportunity to work with the GSMA on various aspects of their proposal. The most important thing to do is if you are planning to apply, you must do so through the online platform before the 16th of October and before the time of 11.59 p.m. UK time, that's GMT plus one. So we'll move on to questions now, but wanted to flag that there are a number of resources out there for you. Terms and conditions is a document that is critical to read before you apply. It sets out all eligibility criteria and will provide you information on anything you need before you actually press apply. If you need any assistance or require any accessibility features, we'll do our absolute best to to meet those needs. Please do send us an email at gsmaif at gsma.com. We have a video as well, which you can see online or on one of our social media platforms. You can download the pitch stage questions. So if you'd like to look at those questions before you apply, you can have those downloaded. We also have a frequently asked questions page. If you get to the end of today and you haven't got your question answered, I strongly suggest you have a look at those frequently asked questions. We've compiled them across all of our innovation funds and we think that they're fairly comprehensive. We'll also upload the demo to the website as well so you can see how you would apply if you wanted to use the actual portal to do so. And as a reminder, this initiative is funded by the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, which we're very excited to be partnering with. So I'm going to pass over to my colleague Armita. I think there's some questions that are coming in and I look forward to answering those. Super. Hi, everyone. Hope you can uh, hear me well. Uh, I'll be reading out uh, the first question for you and this goes to Greg. Um, organizations should have active users and revenues. Our startup is new and has not had any revenues nor active users. Are we eligible? We just had it registered. Over to you, Greg. All right, thank you. Um, so uh, this innovation fund is looking at uh, startups that, that, that have already proven their concepts. So that means uh, the startup needs to have, uh, have generated revenue or raised revenue and also it must have uh, active users that are already using the, the, the solution that they're offering. So in this case, unfortunately, early uh, organization, having not met uh, those two criteria, it will be ineligible for your organization to apply for the innovation fund.
Okay, super. Um, thank you, Greg. At this point, um, we don't have any uh, other questions in the chat box, but may I just throw in a question um, until um, people see if they have any more questions and um, type them up. Um, so, are there any restrictions on what type of um, disability the sh solutions should uh, address? Yeah, so they, they, are, they are, oh, okay, maybe Rose, you can take that. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Thanks, Amida. Um, there are no restrictions on the type of disability um, that you're looking to address. And what I would recommend to all applicants is that they very clearly demonstrate what the challenge or, or why they need a digital solution to solve this particular um, challenge, what, what that is. Um, and also to provide data points and any evidence that they have as to conversations perhaps they've had with persons with disability to understand their varied needs on this topic. So no restrictions um, at all. Um, GSMA defines disability along with the Washington consensus um, questions. Um, and again, more information can be found on our website about that. Greg, did you want to also respond? Nope, that's clear from the end. I can take okay. the next. Um, super. So the next question um, we've got, is it possible to apply even though my company is not in India, it's in Latin America, and if winning, we could com uh, compromise to use the funds to open the company in India? We have active users in India for our app, and in other countries, and sales in LATAM. Uh, Greg, perhaps one for you again. All right. Um, yeah, so this information is also covered in the terms and condition document. Um, yeah, so we, we are open to receiving, um, to receiving applications from outside uh, the countries that uh, we, we've, we are targeting, but those organizations need to ensure that they have uh, traction in, in the eligible countries that uh, we want to receive applications from. So in this case, um, the organization is eligible to apply for the fund. You just have to show that um, you, you you've generated revenue, and at the same time you have tractions traction in India. Super, thank you, Greg. Okay, so next question: application is due mid October, and we have to prove we have matching fund. But if we have matching fund, it will be used before July 2021. Do you expect that we include potential future matching funding as well? Uh, perhaps one for Rosie? Thanks, Amita. Uh, so the match funding uh, does need to be used throughout the, the life of the project. Um, the, the deadline that we put to start projects of July 2021 uh, was, was quite a conservative uh, timeline um, due to COVID and other uh, challenges that we may face um, in visiting some of the applicants and conducting due diligence, it was quite a conservative timeline. So I think it needs to be assessed on a case by case basis. Um, if you have the match funding and you meet all of the requirements, I do encourage you to apply. Um, we will be able to make an assessment on a case by case basis. Um, I hope that answers your question. Super. Thank you, Rosie. So um, the next question is um, uh, to clarify, if it's a £200,000 grant, is 50% maybe 100000 That's correct. Yeah, so if exactly. you're re requesting 200000 then you will need to bring 100000 to the table. Okay. Thank you, Rosie. And uh, the next question, the application is um, due mid-October, and we have to prove we have matching funding. 
Uh, sorry, I think I just already did this question. It's repeating. Uh, right, so next, uh, the next question. Double checking that you said startups can be part of the lead organization applying. Uh, Greg, could you clarify this? Yeah, so, um, so eligible, eligible organizations to apply for uh, this innovation fund are SMEs, uh, startups, and social enterprises. So any of these organizations needs to be the lead applicant. Okay, cool, super. And um, I, the next question, I work in a PWD-led organization that has just received a grant that involves working, um, sorry, this is, uh, my questions have just moved briefly. Uh, sorry, let me start again. I work in a PWD-led organization that has just received a grant that involves working in assistive tech. Can we work along with that grant? Uh, Rosie, one for you. So I, I think I'm not sure uh, what the, what this person means by work along with that grant. Um, but what I would suggest is, you know, if you meet the eligibility criteria, um, you should apply. If you're planning to use that grant money um, as match funding, um, that's generally allowed. Again, we would assess that on a case by case basis. Um, if you do meet all the other criteria, we would encourage you to to apply. Super, thank you, Rosie. Um, I've got two more questions coming. Um, let's take one at a time. So we understand we need to listen to users and prove that we have listened. Do those users need to have been from the target countries, for example, India? Can they be from, for example, the UK? Greg, could you answer that one? Yeah, so the 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 traction or the users using the solution have to be from uh, the eligible countries. So in this case, uh, India and uh, not UK, because UK is not a eligible country. Super. Um, we've got a few uh, more minutes, so if um, you have any more questions, please feel free to send them through. And I've got um, one uh, for Rosie, perhaps. Uh, will this webinar be available as a download after the um, after the conversation has ended? Absolutely, we'll publish this online and you'll be able to see um, our demo and the video as well. So please do go to the website, and check out those resources if you need anything. Great, thank you, Rosie. Um, so it seems like these are all the questions we had for today. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining. Um, we really appreciate your time and we look forward to receiving your applications as well. Um, feel free to um, write down the email address again um, or our website, which is gsma.com forward slash AT Innovation Fund and wishing you all the best of luck with your applications.